Welcome to Kellis Coder and today we will have a hardware resuscitation session on my trusted Atari XL. Motherfucker! So the last time you saw this machine was in my video beating Daryl's impossible pole position high score. During the filming I realized that there was something wrong with this machine because it didn't boot into basic anymore, it always went straight into the self-test. I ran the self-test and everything checked out okay, memory etc. And for the video I could use the cartridge port no problem so I was perfectly fine with this. But now I wanted to fix it. Initially I thought it was the GAL chip, notorious for going bad on this. And I sourced one from actually a guy that lives 20 kilometers from here. I replaced it, that didn't fix it, the GAL is used to select the different chips. And I didn't measure a read write on, uh, on the ROM. So now I'm pretty sure it's actually the basic ROM itself that is broken and maybe pulls down the read write signal always. So we're going to replace that. And that's a bit of a challenge because this is an 8K ROM. Try to find 8K EPROMs, that is really, really difficult. The ROM itself is really notoriously hard to find. I couldn't source one for a decent price. So I'm going to put in a 64 kilobyte ROM with a little adapter board. So let's jump in and first make that adapter board. So this is a 28 pin chip that we need to adapt to 24 pins. We use this little board that I found on the PCBWay community website. And I ordered a couple of these. You will need to use these turned headers to connect the PCB to the socket in your computer. Don't use your standard headers, they won't fit. And you need to solder these turned headers first before soldering the socket. Otherwise you cannot get to the socket. I take one in place, take the other one in place and put them in a little socket so that they are straight. Now I can actually fit my 28 pin socket in there. And solder this. And then we have a nice little adapter from 24 pins to 28 pins. Now this is what is wrong with the Atari. When I switch it on, it goes straight into the self-test instead of going into BASIC. So now I need to download BASIC. I download the RevC, the latest version. And I first check whether this EEPROM that I bought is blank. Yes it is, cool. And now I will concatenate the BASIC C-ROM eight times, filling up the whole EEPROM. This way I'm guaranteed, no matter what the addressing is, that it will start. Now the adapter should actually fix that problem if you store the basic ROM on address 0, but I'm better off being safe than sorry. Now we open the machine and I'm going to extract the ROM. It's actually funny that the 800 is exactly the same as the 800XL except for this expensive piece of ROM. It's hard to believe that a ROM actually was this expensive back then. And now I will stick my pin into your socket. Mm, that's a tight fit, baby. And let's see if my baby comes to life. Oh, the excitement. Oh, oh, yes! Yes, we got basic again. Woohoo! So there you have it, it was a bad basic ROM. These actually are notorious for going bad, I just found out online. And no wonder it's from 1979, I mean, come on. This whole machine is from 1983 and I'm so glad that it's working again. I love these machines so, so much. So when they go bad, it feels like having a sick child and you want to nurse them back to health. So I'm glad it's working and I hope you learned something and Hope to see you in the next one.